Okay, so in this video, I'm going to go over a technique uh, to pretty quickly and efficiently create a ditch die, um, a digital ditch die. So this isn't something I actually do in my practice very often because it, it just isn't something I need too much. Uh, but I know a lot of people do, and I get this kind of request quite often. So I figured I'd make a video um, using some of the tools, and um, yeah, hopefully this helps some people. So a couple of things first. I'm not going to go through all these steps, and this is just like what a traditional uh, intraoral scan, a digital scan will look like. It's usually open, and so the first thing you do is base it. Now, some I think the iTero will give you based models. There's certain ways to get based models. You can get from Serac if you go through Ortho and whatnot. But I have other videos uh, where you can find on YouTube uh, that will walk you through how to base your model, and then you end up with this. Okay, now. Ultimately, we really want to go ahead and press Control, Control Alt A, Control Alt, and then hit um, we that's to highlight the entire thing, and then hit uh, Clear Face Group or Control Shift G. Now I'm not going to bother with that because I already did that in this model. It's the same thing. There's just no surface group, so it's all the solid gray. So if you were to bring in your model from another software, this would look like STLs do not preserve color. It's, it's actually important to know for this. Um, uh, in within the mesh mixer um, format, and if we want to save our progress, you can save it as a .mix, um, and you'll have color. Or if you export it as a .obj, an object file, it'll preserve color. But just keep in mind, STLs do not preserve color. So anyway, so the actual technique for making the ditch die. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to kind of determine what area needs to be ditched. Um, and so I'm going to hit the select button or S. And I've already dialed it down. Uh, it usually starts off around 50. And if you use your bracket buttons, you can dial it down. I like to be more visual so I can see it instead of having to drag this and not really know how big it is. Um, so I would say around 30 or so is what you're going to want. So I'm going to drag. I'm going to keep my little, um, my little red dot right over top of the gingival margin. And when I get equal gingival, I'm just going to track right along the margin itself. Now this can't be, you know, you can't really screw this up. Um, and when you get to the tighter areas, they can be a little bit harder. You can make your little selection area smaller if you, because you don't really want to hit the adjacent teeth. So I'm going to dial it down a little bit so I can get a little more refined. Um, what we highlight of the tooth itself, the prep tooth, is irrelevant. It does not matter. Um, you're just trying to create a little bit of land area outside the tooth because um, this is the area that's going to get ditched away. Um, so once we have that done, we just press the B button. B is the same button as, or let me cancel that, if I were to come down to modify uh, smooth boundary. Okay. So what that does is it gives us nice smooth lines. I'll show you. It'll be a bit better in a second. Hit accept. So it's very clear where the demarcation is. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select again, but this time I'm going to dial this down even smaller. You can go quite small with this, as small as you'd like. And I am, oh, sorry, let me hit escape. That just cleared the selection. Same thing if you just hit clear selection. All right, so now we have, we're going to select again. We're going to keep this little um, part trying to around the you know buckle and lingual it's not going to matter where you get close to the margin is where it really matters you spend a little extra time because you only want to capture the margin or just to beyond it um, you definitely want to stay beyond it but um, the whole point purpose in ditching a die is to give yourself um, the ability to kind of see how the margins fit so just working my way around here once again make it smaller if you need to you really can't go too small so long as it's one smooth, continuous, highlighted area. And I'm probably spending too much time in the buckle out here because it's really not that important. Or in the lingual, I'm sorry. So right down here, right where you think the margin is, or where you know the margin is ideally. And make this a little bit bigger. All right. And this is certainly the most tedious prop, uh, aspect of it but you'll see how simple it is once we have this done. Okay, and we won't be too nitpicky over here. That's fine. I went a little bit buckled, but that's fine. Okay, so I've done that. Now, once again, B button. And if I hit accept and escape, yeah, I apologize earlier. You don't have to hit the control G. That's a step that I do just out of habit, but it automatically makes a new surface. 
But now we've got these different lines marked. So I'm going to do, I'm going to hit the S button again to select. I'm going to double click the, the pink, or the purple, double click this little ring, and double click everything in here. Everything should be well selected. Now if I hit Control G, now I've got a separate tooth, and I've got a separate area that's going to be my trough. And this is the last step. I'm going to come once again, I'm going to hit Select, double click the trough, and now hit T, or Transform. I'll come find it. I'm so used to just hitting T. Um, there we go, Deform, T, Transform. Now, the coordinates right here are based on an average of the entire surface. We want the world coordinates, not the local, the world, W. And we're going to go straight up. Now, you can go up as far as you want. Uh, on a model like this, this is perfectly fine. Hit escape, and we are done. So um, now, if I want to really see how this looks like as a single model, go ahead and hit Control A. Control A. Control Shift G. So last time I did Control G to make a surface. I'm going to create. I'm going to clear them. And here we go. Here's our nicely ditched die. And so when we print it, we're going to be able to see where our crown meets our margin or bridge or whatnot. Uh, you can use the same technique to make a removable die if you contract the area and make it smaller. And that way you can separate this out. That gets a little more complex and not everyone wants to do that. So um, real, real, uh, ideally, you could just have you know one untrimmed die and one trimmed die if you want. Um, but, but, yep, that's that.